So continuing our conversation, uh, let this be a key note for all our viewers coming from a very uh, exceptional person, an expert in voice mm -hmm. and languages. So please go ahead and convey your message to the teachers and the coaches and all the future coaching industries and that would definitely look at your video and your advice. So basically, I think we all have to work towards one very simple fact is that our visual image is very important, but our vocal image is also equally important. So the way we talk, what we talk, how we talk, uh, emanates our uh, our whole being. I won't just say the personality. I just want to stick with that. Uh, so it's very important that we should, as we take care of our body on a daily basis, I hope we all do this. And we should do it. So I do take care of our body. We should also take care of our vocal uh, presence or image, whatever the word you want to use it. And that encompasses a lot of things like your voice, your projections. If you can pick up a new language, it's great. If you don't, at least try to polish your existing language, try to pick up new words, new terminologies, new terms, and try to use it over a period of time. Uh, as a communication expert, I I, I I think it's very important that we should communicate effectively. And uh, talking is not communication. Talking is just the one part of it. So it's it's uh, it's imperative that we all have to start having a fresh insight and wisdom about what we talk, how we talk. And um, yeah, that's it. And then once we talk, we should also do uh, walk the talk. So you're talking and you're saying it, you're doing it. At least I do it on a daily basis. If I'm if I'm free, I would record something. I would uh, kind of listen over and over and find out what are the flaws, what I could uh, do it better, and what are things I need to learn. In fact, when I picked up accent during this COVID, I was free and I thought, uh, let me do something. And instead of uh, picking up a new language, which I could have picked up easily, I thought, let me work on the languages which I, I already know. And I made career out of it. In fact, most of the things today is coming out of those things that where I'm trying to pick up different accents, uh, say British accent or Australian accent or, or American accent. Now, America itself, there are many different accents and dialects, not just the one, like Hindi. In India has got many accents and dialects, same way English has got different, such a tiny country like Britain has got so many accents and they are very different from each other. So there are the dialectical differences, there are accent differences. So accent is something to do with the sound where dialect is, is the larger than accent. So there are the words, the phrases, there are different kind of anecdotes are used. So these things which you need to learn and then keep growing. That's all you need to do. I mean, there's no way out. Either you perform or you perish. You decide whatever you do it. So I think you should perform better. That's it. Beautiful message. And one final note for school teachers and college professors when it comes to communication. So a very short story. So I was staying in Delhi for a while and I saw a guy who was uh, coaching IAS aspirants, the people who would like to go for IAS uh, and thesis exams and all this stuff. So, and uh, we were talking and he enjoyed my uh, conversation. He said, I'll skip today's session. So I said, no, still there is 10 minutes you can go. He said, no, I cannot go like this. I have to prepare and go because I believe that they are equally intelligent. I cannot just walk in in a class and start teaching. That's not the way it works. And I really like that idea. So I think when you go for any kind of coaching, you should should not take anything granted that, okay, I've done this subject and uh, I've done it thousands of times. I can just go and walk in and do it. I don't think, in fact, that was a very beautiful lesson for me also. So when I prepare um, for anything, I prepare as if I'm preparing first time. So if I'm going for even accent session, I would also take, I've done it maybe thousands of times, but still I'll, I'll prepare nicely and then go. So I would not take anything granted. According to my understanding, you even if you have the same subject that you've been teaching, say, for the last 10 years or 20 years, but still I think you have to look at some other aspect which, which can make it more interesting. This is going to be more palatable for the target audience, say, students here. 
and then I think you work towards it. So don't take anything granted. I think we have to work towards it every single day. Wow. Very, very important points that you conveyed. Yeah. And uh... Because for example, when we are doing for yoga also, we say every day I go and jump in yoga class. I think we all have to think about it. What can be done this time a little better? And it's it's maybe it's it's less for the student, more to to the teacher. The way you to said it was own... like <laughs> so funny on that yeah. part. Yeah, yeah, I think yeah. Well, even with yoga, it's like what you said was yeah a little funny but true that you know just jumping and turning your body that's not it. It's a lot more. Yeah, because you 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 also learn. See, I I, I don't I don't remember exactly the phrase was, but. My intention was teaching started with this Greek uh, proverb, Greek or Latin, I'm not sure. But that line says, if um, if your intention of learning through teaching, then nothing can be teaching as an effective tool to learn something. And that made my life. I always believe that uh, teaching is the best way to learn. But you have to be aware of it that you are not teaching just for teaching, you are teaching to learn. And that that made me to think always whenever I do anything which I do it say for a very, very long period, still I, I'll, I'll be doing something more, something. I'm going to add some element. I'm going to uh, delete some element. I'll try to make it a little bit more different. So every time I'm going to be a little bit creative about whatever I'm doing. Yeah, that's about the way I think. So it's more to do with the teachers rather than the students. I mean, we can easily get into uh, this notion that, oh, I'm going to make it a little better for a, for a student. No, it's, it's a learning process for me. It's a learning curve for me as well. So I would not compromise with my learning. Even if I'm teaching something, if I'm, for example, I'm talking to you, I've been talking to the people, these things for, for the last many, many years. But still, at this time, I'm trying to do a little bit different. I'm trying to find out what can be done. I became a little better than what I used to be, say, five years back or two years back. At least I hope so. So, yeah. Beautiful. Uh, very, very interesting conversation this has been. And uh, your patience level for four topics has been really, really commendable. Thank you so much, Neeraj, for being on this interview with us. Thank you so much. Thanks for having me. I am I'm really looking yeah. for, for you and I am so you'll continue doing your great work and we will be sure about it. Thank you and have a good evening. Yes, thank you. Have a wonderful evening.